Last week when I was in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana for Netroots Nation, I reported to you that the online streaming service Spotify removed some episodes of Alex Jones' podcast for violations of their community guidelines, content guide guidelines in terms of service. We also reported that Facebook and YouTube have sort of sporadically been pulling some individual pieces of Alex Jones content off the air. And then this morning I woke up to the news that Apple has made the decision to remove all Alex Jones and Infowars content from iTunes, which is, of course, one of the biggest audio streaming and podcasting services in the world. The entire library is being removed and piggybacking on this. We also learned this morning that Spotify and Facebook will be removing even more Alex Jones content from their library. So let's go through this piece by piece. Question one. Was anything of value lost? Is anything of value lost by the removal of Alex Jones content from different places on the Internet? The answer is an emphatic no, no absolutely not. Is this censorship of Alex Jones? Well, let's think about that. He can still produce the show, right? So not being on iTunes has no impact on whether he can get up, put his pants on one leg at a time or maybe jumping into both legs at once. I wouldn't uh, presume to know how Alex Jones puts his pants on. Maybe Go he's into not his, wearing pants. Maybe he's not even he has a yeah, desk there. You don't see even below the desk. Go into his studio and do his show. No, he can still produce the show. He can distribute it on his own servers if he wants. I don't know that that's something that he does. And he can put the content any place that will have him. Now, do I understand why he would call it censorship? The answer is yes. Would I be saying the same things if iTunes banned the David Pakman show? I probably would. But what we have to think about here is, uh, is there a double standard? And on the one hand, claiming to be a free market libertarian minded individual who wants businesses to have the opportunity and the right and the the the, the ability to make decisions that they want to make about their platform, which they built with their money. Right. Ultimately, that's what Apple did with iTunes. Or do we say that they should be forced to host Alex Jones's content? And part of the problem with Jones specifically is that he's a conspiracy theorist who partially makes money saying, claiming that everybody wants to suppress his speech because they don't want the ultimate truths he's telling to get out there. When iTunes then pulls him off, I think it definitely bolsters that narrative with his audience. Of course, you've got a conspiracy theorist. Their content gets singled out for removal. That becomes evidence of the conspiracy to suppress the dangerous truths that Alex Jones is willing to tell. The reality is the content isn't being pulled off iTunes or wherever because it's conspiratorial. It's being removed because it's against Apple's hate speech guidelines. Facebook's explanation is similar, not conspiracies, but glorifying of violence using dehumanizing language to refer to people who are transgender, Muslim and immigrants. Spotify now removing all Alex Jones content says it's because he is expressly and principally promoting, advocating or inciting hatred or violence against the group or individual based on characteristics. So the question for me is more about what is legally OK for these companies to do. I don't think anyone would argue that any of these companies are doing anything that is sort of against the law or uh, certainly not a violation of the First Amendment because we're not talking about the government. And then we can start thinking about is there anything that makes content publishing platforms different, right? Could you say that because Spotify and Facebook and YouTube have massive curation power that it's a form of suppressing speech? I don't know. That's certainly the case that the defenders of Alex Jones are going to make. Um, I actually don't know how it took this long for Jones to become a liability on these platforms. Right. I mean, the Sandy yeah. Hook truther stuff, Pizzagate, only now the platforms are saying we're going to pull them off. I guess it's probably partially because of public outcry. Yeah. And I mean, he's been saying crazy stuff for a long time, but yeah. it's getting worse and worse. I feel like after Sandy Hook would be the time to do it, right? I was thinking of, of an analogy to what Alex Jones has been doing. And I thought, let's say I want to write a book, right? And I've, I've mentioned, I've, I've thought about writing a book. I've talked to literary agents. I would need a publisher for the book, or I can choose to self publish, which would be sort of like Alex Jones saying, well, I'm going to put the content on my own servers so nobody can pull it off of there. If I bring the book to 50 publishers and they all say, no, we don't want to publish it. Are my ideas being suppressed? Do I have any right to be published by a publisher who publishes other political books? I think the answer is obviously no. 
Now, you might hear me make that analogy and say, David, that's different. A book publisher makes individual deals with writers, Spotify, Facebook, you, YouTube, whoever. These are platforms where the default is anybody can make an account and upload stuff. So with publishing of a book, it's a decision decision to publish that the business makes with Facebook and YouTube and Spotify and iTunes. They're making the decision to say we're going to remove Alex Jones content and that's a different situation. I think it's a distinction without a relevant difference. It was Rand Paul who said something about single payer health care would make doctors slaves or something like that. Right. Because they would have to work uh, because they would have to cover everyone it or provide really services though, because, to everybody. Yeah. They don't yeah. have to be doctors if they don't want to. They can choose another job. So then the analogy from what Rand Paul said here is, are you enslaving iTunes if you force them to host Alex Jones's content? You can't really make the argument Rand Paul made without applying the same logic to Spotify or iTunes or Facebook. And also interesting, of course, is that the same people who simultaneously argue businesses should be able to do whatever they want as long as it's not illegal. They uh, should be able to, you know, it should be legal to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation, real or perceived, for example. But they should be forced to host Alex Jones content. That doesn't really make sense to me. They should be able to deny a gay person service but you're forced to publish Alex Jones's Pizzagate rantings and Sandy Hook trutherism. I would actually make the case that since being gay isn't a choice, but being a violence inciting conspiracy theorist is business should be allowed to discriminate against violence inciting conspiracy theorists way before they should be allowed to discriminate against gay people. But that's, I think, going a little bit deeper than maybe the Alex, the specifics of the Alex Jones situation warrant. If you disagree with me, and I know from the messages I was getting on Twitter earlier today, there are people who believe I am being hypocritical here, mm. that if it was me being targeted, that I would have a different view. That may be because I would have a very emotional response. But if I'm violating terms of service, aren't I just violating terms of service? If you disagree with me, let me know. This is also being discussed on the David Pakman Show subreddit at davidpakman.com slash R-E-D. D I T discuss it there. We will take a quick break and be back with plenty more right after this. I am thrilled to tell you that today's episode is sponsored in part by Blinkist dot com slash Pacman. Blinkist is a really unique service for your phone, tablet and web browser, and it is incredibly useful for people like me who love books and learning but are busy. Blinkist takes the best and most popular nonfiction books and condenses them into 15 minute audiobooks. I'm sure that if you're like me, you have a very long list of books that you've been meaning to read. You only have so many hours in the day, and that's why Blinkist is so amazing. They take the most important information, the themes, the insights from each book, and they distill it into a 15 minute audiobook that you can listen to in one sitting. I've listened to a ton of books on Blinkist. Our audience can get a seven day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, I put a link in the description. I have listened to Blinkist books about economics, about political science, about history, about science, so many interesting things. And after the free trial, if you like it, you can continue enjoying thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. Go to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. That's B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com forward slash P-A-K-M-A-N. 